up everyone it's your boy Jester James coming at you with another YouTube video today I'm going to be starting a series of videos revolving around networking basics and I mean legit ground up networking so let's get started with what's in a computer network what pieces of the puzzle are needed to officially make something connect and therefore a quote unquote network Let's give a kiss to my pengy up there as we're going to keep it simple, superheroes. You know, kiss, keep it simple, sweetie. Keep it simple, superheroes. I think the pengy would be actually up there. <laughs> Starting with a network interface card or NIC for short. So what's a network interface card or a NIC? These are chips with either Wi-Fi enabled in them or an Ethernet port connected to it. Now what the hey is an Ethernet port? That's a good question. Let me throw one up for you. And that's used with an Ethernet cable, obviously, something uh, something like this, you know, it's got classic Ethernet, port like that. Now, that's a classic networking cable and port. So what devices are these connected to? Which brings us into, uh, you know, routers and switches, which I am not about to bring up, but you know, right there. We got routers and switches. <laughs> A router is that nice box you usually connect to either a modem, which your internet provider will give you, or you could be next level and have a modem-router combo. The key player here is the router, which acts as the piece of equipment choosing the best route for your information to travel. It's an awesome piece of tech, giving all your devices IP addresses and giving it that sweet, sweet access to the interwebs that we know and love. Now, a switch is a nifty piece of hardware because it basically gives you more ports to connect things to without the need of an extra router. So ports, you can come a little bit closer here on the back of the router, you see these, these are ports. So it's yellow here on this router because that's the port that you'd connect either your modem or you direct connectly to the internet access point. So a switch, right, basically acts as a bridge to your network. Now you could have a managed switch or an unmanaged switch, or as I like to call, a smart switch or a dumb switch. A dumb switch will simply be a bridge. It takes all the data from your devices it's connected to and simply passes it on to the router. The managed switch though is real fun because you can do some super cool things like create VLANs or virtual networks on each pair of the ports. So as per each port, you can give it its own separate network, basically giving you more power again without the need of a separate router. And this is very useful when you have to extend your network or connect the devices you want to segment on your network. Like say something like a firewall or a printer. A firewall does the job of keeping you safe from the fiery inferno that is the world wide web. It's the wild west out there. You don't know who's trying to be evil and steal your data. And even more, you don't know what security holes are already in your network. Who knows? Maybe your printer can get hacked. In fact, your printer can get hacked. It's best to stay safe and practice good cyber hygiene. Most routers these days come with a firewall built in. So don't worry, you don't have to go buy one right this instant, unless you want to have some real fun and get personal with it, as you can customize your network a lot more. All of these devices, routers, switches, firewalls, leading up to you being able to connect all your nodes or hosts to your network. And nodes and hosts are fundamentally just another way to say any device that has a network card, a, ne a NIC. That allows you to connect to a network. So your computers, your iPhones, your TVs, and so much more, especially with IoT or the Internet of Things being all sorts of devices wanting to connect. So now we know some basic hardware, but how exactly does it work? How do we get these devices to talk to each other? It's actually a lot simpler than you think. Basically, your router has a table programmed in it where when a device connects, it notes the hardware address or media access control, MAC address for short, if you're being easy and your network is just plug and play, your router will then assign an IP address to that device, remembering who has what IP through the MAC address. It's all kept nice and tidy in what's called an ARP and MAC table on your router and, or switch. ARP is short for Address Resolution Protocol, 
and it does exactly what it sounds. That's the network protocol that does the magic of figuring out what MAC address has what IP. In other words, which device on your network has which IP address, allowing the network and your router to know which device to send what kind of data to, and so on and so on. So it does that using DHCP, or Dynamic Host Control Protocol. It's one of the it's the it's the protocol giving your devices the IP addresses. If you don't want your IP addresses assigned through the magic of DHCP, you can do what's called statically assigning your devices IPs, giving them static IP addresses. But that's a little complicated and involves subnetting. Let's leave that for later, and don't worry, we'll get into network protocols in another video as well. There's a bunch, and they're a lot of fun because sometimes you can break them. Shout out to my pen testers out there because hacking network protocols is fun in itself. So now you know about what's in a network, some of the devices that make up a network, and how IP addresses are assigned and how computers get connected to the internet and the worldwide web. Now the last thing I wanted to cover real quick is a term called packets. Packets are what the networking gurus call your data as it's on the wire. Packets of data. This term is important because soon we're going to have some fun doing packet analysis, which is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to analyze the data on the network, and you'll be able to see literally everything going on on your network interface. But no spoilers. That's it for this video. I hope you found it valuable. If you did, please leave a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe for more content from your boy, Jester James. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!